I used to think people that died in movies really died and they just wanted to die. podcast where we look back at the most memorable movie going experiences of our youth and eat candy. I'm your host, Heidi Gardner, and I'm joined as always by my brother, Justin Gardner. Hi, Justin. Hey, Heidi. What's going on this week? Well, what's going on is I'm still buzzing from last week and my big surprise birthday present. Um, Justin surprised me with my uh, favorite singer from like when I was 16 years old in Kansas City. He's he's saying at my 16th birthday party, I'm talking about Drew Fenton of Drew Six. And Justin got him on the podcast last week. And he like sang me the same song he sang to me on my 16th birthday. It was like crazy. Yeah. So uh, I just in case anybody didn't see it, uh, let's just play a clip. And then we'll come back. Everything about you turns me on, except your boyfriend. We could be leaving this vibe alone without your boyfriend. Well, I think I would like to take you home, but not your boyfriend. Okay, so... um. I just want to reiterate, since people didn't really, um, uh, they didn't, they probably didn't watch it. Uh, if they're, if you're just seeing it now, if you saw, if you saw it, um, Drew hung out for about an hour and a half while we were talking about those movies, and he couldn't hear. All he could hear is me. So, <laughs> like, he was, he couldn't, he, because I have my my um, uh, my headphones uh, in, um. All he could literally hear was me talking. Only so he couldn't your, hear the conversation. Your On my side, side of the conversation. Of Return yeah. to Oz. Only Justin's. No <laughs> Jack. No Heidi. Just Justin's. No. No. Oh my god. Um, and then and then we had a little bit, and I think that he can nail that. So I, I yes. just I, you know like the 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 spoiled rock star. So I just I can't say enough um, just amazing things about him. And that guy is been doing it for the past two decades he is a grinder and i love it i mean i just i, love I, I can't too. say enough good things yeah i was so happy that i mean i actually surprised him when he was like do you want me to sing you something and i started singing that right. song and he was like whoa that is a deep cut i have not even thought about that song probably since you were 16 right. <laughs> um but that was so cool um yeah. But, uh, and then thank you for, um, my other birthday present. I, well, I opened the package, but I haven't opened, uh, what's inside of it, but thank you. Uh, I, I did, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't send you that. But it's matches your backpack. I thought it was you because you have the Blockbuster backpack. I thought you got me the Blockbuster water bottle. I mean, that would make sense, but like I I did not send I did not send you that. <laughs> this is very like this is I mean, weird, it didn't like, no. have um maybe I should have opened like a it. address? Well, no, it didn't, but I mean, I was like when I opened it. But it I, had your well, clearly it had, had my address. address, but it didn't have a return address, but when I opened you it You should you should um, open you should open that up. Well, yeah, no, now I well, I don't should know you that open I necessarily it up? I mean, want I to open it up on camera because and I'm not, and I'm, not I'm not I'm not pun- I'm not punking you. This is the, I'm no. I mean, like this. Yeah, there's a is there is a note in there like I, that yes. I did not send this to you. <laughs> there's a message in a bottle, but a oh, blockbuster shit. bottle. OK, uh, is there, <laughs> well, OK, well, not, the there's... first of all, there's the first wait, there's stuff in the bottom, but there's. Okay, before I do the note, there's a watch in here. <laughs> there's a watch? Yes. <laughs> Shut up. You that? sent you had to have sent me the 
this. this is, I did not send you this. This is a watch from Chi Chi's. Remember Chi Chi's restaurant? Yes. With like the fried I, ice cream. And can you see that? Chi Chi's a celebration of food. Yeah, actually, that was and, a very like that was a very good. But I did not say no. I I reiterate, I did not send this to you. This is Chi-Chi's like an is, old watch, too. This isn't like a new Chi Chi's watch. I mean, I, I love it. That, Thank you. Um, I would like that, but yeah. Well, no, I you okay. shouldn't be thanking me. I, I didn't um, send it to you. All right. <laughs> um. Okay, I see who it's from. I'm going to read this, but um. <laughs> okay. Are oh, you going to keep me in the dark? Okay, but that's cool. Okay. Dear Heidi. It was always so nice watching you rent movies. You and your brother were delight for children. And I see you've grown into oh, adults. Good on ya. Uh, My favorite movie actor is Warren Beatty. I never cared much for Paul Newman, truth be told. Cool Hand Luke should have been a comedy. It was that laughable. I hated it. Keep shining, girly. Kisses and popping corn, Zelda from Blockbuster. Uh, okay. Did you do this? No, I did not. No, I did not. No, I did not. Do, no, I didn't do that. <laughs> like she, she she's got me the, that thing. The, she, she's the one who got yeah, you the she, backpack. The woman. Well, you from, know her. Yeah. I, I knew yeah, her you, when we were like babies. I mean, I knew her when she said, I, I, you were delightful children. She was the lady right. from Blockbuster when we were little. Who? Okay. No. So she said she wanted to send you something, and I gave her your address. <laughs> so, well, Wait, she's when like, she, she's when she like, gave you the backpack. Harmless. You gave her my address. She yeah. She said you she she wanted to send you something, and I didn't. Well, I guess your birthday's out there now. I mean, like it's out there, like. SNL like broadcasts it. So yeah, I mean, I guess I mean this doesn't even say happy birthday though. But I mean also oh, though, well, <laughs> I mean it's a timing. I guess I don't care maybe that you gave an old, very old I'm lady sorry. my address. It's like but, a like, little old lady. Like don't give anyone else my address. I- I'm not ever. No, I, I I obviously will not do that. But that, yeah, I was. Well, you. I mean, look, you got something out of it. What is it? You got like a watch and a. <laughs> well, no, I love the Chi Chi's watch. I wonder if that's because there was that Chi Chi's by Blue Ridge Mall or something. Remember, right across. Right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But the yeah Blue Ridge Mall. But the blockbuster. Oh, you know, we posted the Blue Ridge Mall uh, sign. You posted the Blue Ridge Mall sign on Instagram, and then I put it on. The where we were when Instagram. <laughs> and you think that she. I don't know, dude. I don't know. But like it was like the Chi Chi's was right there. I know it was and right that's there. Where, that's where the movie theaters were. And then the blockbuster was in Raytown. So it was only just right down the road. OK, Ooh. well. I mean, I don't want to say I, she's, creepy. She's because... not. It's not. It's it's cute. And I think that I think that letter is pretty cute. What'd she call you, girly? Yes, keep shining, girly. <laughs> Warren Beatty? And I also I love think that. it's really cute that she's it's said, your first it's your first piece of fan mail, I think, right? Like as no. far well, I guess it isn't about the show. I've gotten fan mail. Um, well, no, well, I mean our fan, not your fan mail. I'm like our fan <laughs> no, mail. Just kidding. Um, but no, my favorite line was that she said it was always so nice watching you rent movies. Like we rented movies cutely or something, like. We were doing well. It. We spent a lot of time in there. There was a lot of time in that blockbuster. So, in any event, we, uh, I, you might be listening to this and be like, "What in the fuck are they talking about?" So, why are they um, wasting our time? Right? Why are they wasting our time? What? Why? Why have we gotten to nothing but trouble and the burbs? Um, but uh, we actually, this is the second time in this episode we're going to do this. But we should play just a little bit of. I forget which episode it was. Maybe episode four, episode five. I'm not sure. Um, Maybe it was. And just kind of explain who this person is. So let's play that now. I ran into her in the grocery store. And she is 88. 
Oh my god. Um, I know. She's, the, she's like the most adorable. I mean, and she remembered me. She remembered me. And she asked about you because oh she's so god. proud of you. Yes, she's so proud of you. Um, so I I helped her take her groceries out to her car. And that's who got me that. So, right. Uh, so Justin there, there gave my is. address to her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I'm not really sorry because you got something out of it. She's a harmless old woman. I got. She's clearly a fan. A Chi Chi's watch, a blockbuster. Um, I mean, this is all cool shit. This is why I thought you sent me this. A blockbuster water bottle. Um, a letter, and then there's. Is there something in there? Yes. Okay, this is stupid, Justin. Are you messing with me? I'm serious. This isn't funny. <laughs> I'm not messing with you. I'm not messing because with it's you. freaking me out. The whole just connection you made with the Chi Chi's and the Blue Ridge Mall, and the fact that I um, posted that because these are these are what is that. Digital Underground. Oh, this yeah. is from. Oh my! This is. Oh, shoot! I'm breaking stuff. Um, that's from Nothing But Trouble. And then look. Wait, the Digital Underground is from Nothing But. Tr- yes. Oh my God! Wait, 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 wait! Put that. Put that. Oh, that's right. Oh my God! That's the. Uh, that's the. Is that the mayor or the judge? That's the judge, the judge. right? Oh. With his hot dog. Oh. What? The twins? How did you Uh, not send these? This is what we're talking about on here today. I don't. I did not send that. Like a 90 year old woman sent me this I didn't get that backpack for myself. I didn't get that backpack for myself. I would have gotten it for myself. Why are you acting like that's weird? I'm not. I'm, it's because, well, it's actually it's kind of tiny, so like it only it only works as like like a it only works as a purse or a wall decoration. So I did, yeah. Like you remember, you remember this person. You remember this person. So like it's not from when eighty nine I mean, or ninety. I've never. You have a you have a remarkable memory, which we will talk about later. But you have a remarkable memory about shit like that okay well so and you have a remarkable so, way of giving people my address from you know the late 80s what? okay it's okay. fine well, you no, no one needs to hear more about um no us, that's that's enough on of you that's like, enough on the uh the, the blockbuster <laughs> stalker that we've got. we'll talk about the rest of this off air let's like lighten it up and talk about candy <laughs> Please, because I'm yes. scared. I'm so, I'm sorry. You shouldn't be scared. She. I don't think that she can move around very much anymore. She was. She was. She wasn't very spry. Okay. So. Well, uh, I have a package from you. Yes. God love her. God love her. <laughs> Let me open this up. So this is the segment that we have every week, where we eat a little candy. It's our concession of the week. Okay, so what is what's hundred percent cocoa? What is this? <laughs> I did not see <laughs> what you is that. this. You didn't send me <laughs> No, I did not send you hundred percent cocoa. This is such a stupid episode what? already of you and I getting sent just shit in the mail. Okay. I don't know what that was. So, a DVD. So- yeah, so 13-year-old Coco dreams of becoming a famous style icon. You didn't send me no, this? No, I didn't. Just because I like fashion, I you're, did not send you're not 100%, 100% Coco. This you're is, not 100% Coco? This is making me mad because this is making it seem like I sent you shit and I got all this shit. You did send me this. I sent and you candy. Hot, hot tamales. Yes, hot tamales. That is what I sent you. Right. Two two. <sighs> Hot tamales, tamales because I'm feeling a little devilish, hellish tonight. If anybody cares, Ooh. I'm wearing a <laughs> pinhead shirt and I'm wearing a little necklace with a devil. And um, could you say could you say that into the say that again into the mic? We saw it, but there's I'm a, wearing a little we couldn't hear you. a necklace that has a little devil on it. And so I thought hot got the Hellraiser T-shirt. A devil necklace and hot tamales. 
Um, hot tamales. Okay. Can we talk about hot tamales for a second? Yes. Do you want to hear my take on hot tamales first? 100%. Okay. Seriously, and I'm guilty myself. An ex- 100% cocoa. <laughs> 100% cocoa. We're going to start using that on the show um, when we agree right. with each other. 100% cocoa. Um, hot tamales are severely underrated, right? Yeah, 100% cocoa. And I, uh, 100% cocoa. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so guilty of it because I never buy them. And I never bought them even as a kid. It always would take someone else, like my um, best, one of my best friends, Jenny. She was like hot tamales ride or die since she was like little. And she would get them at the movies like when we were in high school and college. Yeah. And then I would always be like, right. Hot tamales are so good. And I even think mom liked them, Justin. But like we never sprung for them. Oh, wow. We never sprung for them. No. No, absolutely not. We were definitely in the bunch of crunch, sour, candy, gummy, like, you know, reality. But also we, we were but even in like an M&M reality. We just never. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it was chocolate. It was it was chocolate or like s- mm. cloyingly sweet Starburst, Skittles, mm. right? All that stuff. It's um, so good. By the way, I, I am chasing it with a... Uh, Razzle, razzleberry peace tea. Oh my god! <laughs> is it in the size of a can of so, an energy drink? This is the size of my head. <laughs> this is for comparison. It's as big as my head. It's this is bigger than an energy drink. This is That's, like this is a this is a, a registered That's weapon. Terrifying. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So I'm gonna drink very little of this because I'm sure it has a ton of sugar in it. Although it does look like tea. Okay. So. The razzleberry tea actually does look like tea. Mm. So. Um, mm. I wish I had some tea, especially because I think my hot tamales are stale. They're, I'm still going to eat them, but they're like. Uh, well, I like hot tamales because it feels like it almost feels like a challenge, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like I feel like it's it's really cinnamon's a really it can be too much. Right. Mm-hmm. But hot tamales is just enough. Right. But if you eat an entire package of hot tamales, right, an entire box, um, your mouth is going to be pretty spicy, Mm -hmm. pretty spicy. Well, I think it's cool because my dream has always been to, like, swallow gum without guilt. And I know it doesn't stick in your stomach. We talked about that on the last podcast. But I always, like, wanted to be able to, like, chew, um, like, well... I always wanted to be able to like just, well, no, like I just, I couldn't like keep gum in my mouth because it was so good. You want to swallow it like bubblicious or big big chew, you know, that feeling. Right. Especially quench gum. I used to just like swallow that immediately. But hot tamales taste like a big red that you like don't have to feel guilty about Mm. swallowing big red gum. So I just, it's like candy and gum together for me. It feels like it does have a little bit more of that chew. Like it's a little bit stickier. It's like in between like a Mike and Ike's and a Juju fruit. Mm -hmm. Right. There's a little bit more body, whereas Juju fruit will just lock up your teeth. Yeah. And Mike and Ike's is a little bit more airy. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know why it seems like that they're it's they're the same thing, but. These just seem like they have got a little bit more guar gum in them or something like that. That's a really good way to put it because I was going to talk about consistency too, but I didn't have the like gummy equivalent and you found like the exact like center line. But because I was going to say like, this is like a little bit easier to get through than a milk dud, but like I was going to take a chocolate. So I think you did really good. Yeah. Like a, like a caramel. I appreciate that. (laughs) Welcome. We've uh, we've got some spicy movies. Yeah, today. we've got not only like spicy where we were when movies, but just like effed up <laughs> movies, <laughs> um, which I that were really that they, they were really they were they were targeted towards children, kind of. Yeah, I I mean, like 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 they were definitely weren't like, OK, this is an adult movie. These were definitely made for like that kind of 
I think Zeb said Goldilocks zone, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Not too hot, not too yeah. cold. Oh, for right? sure. Yeah. They were the they were the type that like, you know, you would like pat your parents and be like, I want to see that one. I want to see that one. And the parents could right, kind right, of right. be like, I see some people that look like me or seem like me in that. I'll <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll take you. Um, but also I want to say these movies are weird, but they like changed my life. Uh, both of them for for madly different reasons. But the one we're going to start with, our first where we were when, is nothing but trouble. My God. My God. Nothing but trouble. Um, Justin, do you remember where you were when, when you saw nothing but trouble? I, I'm pretty sure it was one of two theaters. Yeah. Is either the old Word Parkway or it was Bannister Square. So in Kansas City, like the mall was Bannister Mall. Um, no, it's no longer around, but they were, it was similar as to like, I think we were talked about Blue Ridge Mall. You know, they had a, a theater in the actual mall itself. Oh, yeah, we definitely did talk about Bannister Mall because we talked about it for uh, Beverly Hills Cop. So I saw Beverly Hills Cop in, in the Bannister Mall. AMC, but then there was an AMC across the street. It, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was an AMC. And it's almost just like they didn't have enough like room in the mall. So they opened up a theater across the street. And it's like the Bannister Mall 6, Bannister Square 6, I believe. So I'm pretty sure that's where I saw Nothing But Trouble. That's also where we saw Spaceballs. That's also um, where we saw Word Park where- Jurassic Park. And mm. do you know who else saw Jurassic Park there? At Bannister Square. Uh, Paul Rudd? <laughs> no, but close. MC Hammer and his backup dancers. Can't touch this. Whoa. Yes. That's pretty One cool. of my best friends in grade school, Jessica Shelton, was at Bannister Square. Either Jessica Shelton was there or her sister or her brother. And they saw, or all three of them, and they saw MC Hammer and his backup dancers because they were in town doing a concert. Um, and. Yeah, they they saw that. <laughs> they saw hammer, hammer. Don't hurt him. Um, hammer don't hurt him. But yeah, I rem- too legit, too legit quit. to quit. Yeah, I do this. Yeah. Uh, some people do this. To Did quit. we do this? I do this. Too legit. Was it too legit? Too legit. Too legit. To quit. To quit. Oh my god. Okay. Wait. I used maybe to I was. Le- you know what I was doing? I was too doing. Legit. I think I was doing. I was doing. Cut it out. Yeah. But so like. I was I was combining them, right? So the Dave Coulier, uh, Uncle Joe, not Uncle Joey. What was the other one? Uncle Joey and uh, Uncle Jesse. But Dave Coulier was Uncle Joey. Uncle Joey. Cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Yeah, Uncle Joey, right. So I was combining Uncle Joey with Too Legit to Quit right there, just to kind of give people a sense of like what happened. And I would trademark <laughs> that, copyright it before this comes out, or else someone will take the MC Hammer Uncle Joey mashup you just made up. <laughs> Combo. Right. Um, so Bannister Square. I'm pretty sure it was Bannister Square where I saw nothing but okay, trouble. Okay, Bannister Square. And did you, you didn't see it with me? Well, here's the thing. So I think it was 91 Nothing But Trouble came out. And I don't, so I don't quite remember seeing it in a theater. I completely believe you that we might have seen it in the theater. But Nothing But Trouble is one of those where we were wins for me that was like the movie that would always be on TV on Saturday or Sunday on Channel 41 or Channel 62, sometimes HBO occasionally if we were somewhere else. And in the time I saw it, in the part that it was on, I would stop, I would park there and watch the rest of the movie. Every single time I I just thought it was the funniest, coolest, best movie I had ever seen in my life. Um, Justin, do you want to just kind of like do a real quick just setup of it? Good Lord. Okay, so um, Chevy Chase (laughs) plays an asshole. (laughs) I don't even I think he's a lawyer. I think he's a lawyer. Actually, I'm almost positive he's a lawyer. And he has to take a trip somewhere. And he's at a party 
and he meets Demi Moore and Demi Moore is like, uh, or Demi Moore needs a ride. Mm -hmm. And she asks him, Hey, hey, can you give me a ride? You've got a car. And he's like, you know, kind of, okay, it's Demi Moore. So like, uh, maybe I will give you a ride. And then there are these two like Brazilian. rich people, yeah, Brazilian rich people who just like, oh, you are going for a ride? <laughs> uh, we would love to go for a ride. <laughs> and they just attach themselves. I think that they're clients of uh of uh Chevy yeah. Chase's lawyer character know him somehow. Yeah. So uh, they all go for a ride. Yeah, they basically and, um, go for a ride and then they, you know, they start riding into they're driving into like a smaller like podunk town. And, you know, they're from the big city and the other two are rich and from Brazil. Mm -hmm. So they're already kind of making fun of like, where the hell are we? This blah, blah, blah. Um, and I think right. Chevy Chase uh, goes through a stop sign, ends up getting pulled over. And he tries to. He, but it's not just that he, he ends up getting pulled over. He he tries to speed away from the cops at the behest of the Brazilians who just for some reason are like outrun the cops randomly. Like it's a completely random like request that and he just and he just goes is with that, it. He's a lawyer. Um just real quick He's side track. Is that a little bit of PTSD for you though? Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh I do know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were gonna bring that well, up. <laughs> it's been long enough. I don't know what Yeah, I think he's I think he's he's learned no, his lesson. She oh she mom okay. uh I'm Oh, well, we have two. We have two of those things to talk about if we're talking about. I don't know. <laughs> inter interactions with the cops. Okay, the, the mom story. Real quick, the mom story. So we were, mom was chronically late. We were always late for school. And one day we get pulled over by the cops. And uh, she uh, just, you know, for whatever reason, decides that she doesn't want to you know, over the course of her life, hasn't paid a single traffic ticket. So she has like basically a warrant out for her arrest because of traffic tickets, nothing else. And, um, uh, <laughs> we were, we were in the back seat. Uh, I think I was nine. You were three, I oh, think. Wow. And I'm, 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 maybe it's I'm my sorry, first Mom. memory. Um, but <laughs> maybe, um, and so, the cop is like, hey, uh, you know, we this is like, I don't know if I have to take you in or not. You know, it's like, um, you know, if we take you in, like we might have to like send the kids to which is a weird thing because we have family. I don't know what he was actually talking about, but I remember him specifically talking about like we might have to like take them into juvenile send us or, to hall the or town, something like nothing that. But trouble takes in. I mean, maybe that's what she was thinking. <laughs> They're going to like go to some right. horror house. So. So in, 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 instead of saying, uh, I've got family, like we can very easily facilitate this. The cop starts walking back to his car to, I guess, get something. And mom starts the car. Oh God. <laughs> and, and, and mom starts the car and like the cop comes rushing back and like, you know, turns off the car, you know, and, and mom's hysterical. And I think you were started to cry. Yeah, for sure. I don't remember. Wasn't there just a uh, little bit of movement on the car, though? I remember a little gas being put on the bed. I just a little. I remember. I you. But I was three. So maybe I, I just have a traumatic memory of. The listen, <laughs> that that could very that could very well be have been the case. I just remember. I don't think it was downshift. Right. I think it was. And then immediately that cop just right. shot back. In, I mean, I you know? do remember like, his hand, ma'am, ma'am, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. And it was, and you know, and obviously she was, you know, pretty, pretty yeah. upset at that point, but they let us go. Like, that's the thing after all Thank of that. Thank you for letting us go. And <laughs> yes. I just want to say, we'll, we'll move on to nothing but trouble, but don't feel bad because we did tell kind of a hard story about her mom right there. But at the end of the show, I have a really sweet thing to say about her. So it's all going to balance out. 
Um, but I just had okay, to go okay. there because okay, okay, okay. yes, they try to outrun. I also think that is a. I also think that's a sweet story because she was yeah, worried about us, no, you know. So like, I mean, ultimately, like that, she was like, "You're not sending my kids to juvenile yeah. hall or whatever the fuck, yeah. right?" You know, and just like, but uh, yeah. So it was. It was that was. We can laugh about yes. it now. <laughs> it's it's totally sweet, but yeah. in nothing but trouble, they try to unru- uh, outrun a cop, and then they end up um, getting taken in to this count this town's like prison, which is also their courthouse, which is also just this total house of horrors where like all the like judge, the sheriff, the deputy, everybody lives in this house. It's where they like take criminals in, book them and then um, do what they will with them once they're booked. Um, It's like, honestly, (laughs) there's too many psycho levels of it. But I want to say that the one of the and Dan Aykroyd directed it all. And then he stars as the judge. He stars as wrote, directed, yes, stars. he stars as the judge wrote, and he stars and started, yeah. as one of those like slobbering um, baby men, baby mans. Um, he's either Bobo or little devil. I don't remember. And then um, John Candy is like a deputy and um, like. The deputies, uh, he plays his own sister too in the movie. Mute yes. sister. Who is um like gonna be wet off to Chevy Chase. <clears throat> Who's sweet on Chevy yes. Chase. Yeah. Now, what I have to say about one of the biggest things, there's so many things I remember about this movie, but the biggest thing I remember about this movie the first time I saw it was. After like Chevy Chase and Demi Moore, I think get booked. There's another group who's gotten pulled over for speeding. And they're just kind of this like they kind of look like um actually one of the it's it's Daniel Baldwin and a couple of other people. So they're like, you know, they've been out clubbing. It's Daniel oh, really? Baldwin and a couple a few ladies and uh they are speeding. They get brought in and I think they show like the evidence of what they had with them. And it's like baggies of Coke and it's obviously like drugs or something. And so it's like, it's seen it's paraphernalia. And I remember just like as a kid, like the first time, you know, you see like sex in a movie or something like that, but it was just like drug stuff. And I was like, Ooh, (laughs) like just like, Ooh, they're cool. (laughs) You know, if you go and watch this movie and see if they're cool, (laughs) but I was just kind of like, ah, they're Uh bad. And like, the girls had on like short little dresses and like, they just looked like so cool. So there was just something in my mind, like that first time when you see something that like seems like risque or taboo or something, like it was just so exciting to me. I just like, and I think we were, I was at Mamos, you know, and I saw it at TV and it was, it was one of my moments where you're like looking back, like, is Mamma or Bampo going to come in? Am I going to have to turn mm. this off? Cause there's a baggie of Coke <laughs> on the table. Like this is, This is big for me. Um, But so they are found guilty and they're kind of like, what are we going to have to do? And they're like, spend the night in jail or something like that. And then they like pull this The judge, like pulls this lever and they get sent down like a shoot, like almost like a Goonies type slide, like where they're like going on an adventure or something through this house of horrors. But then they go through the bone crusher, which these actual like human people then like come out on the other side as just bones <laughs> into a pile. So like this like cool like roller coaster like stripped their bones <laughs> and just clean, clean. There's no blood. Uh, another it's clean. thing that like when you're little, like I didn't know. I thought maybe that. C- could be a thing like maybe that could happen or so I just it felt real it felt like oh if you do bad things you might get the bone crusher don't do drugs I don't know if you knew this about me Justin but no actually I do know you knew this about me because you corrected me when I was little or you taught me the other way but I used to think people that died in movies really died and they just wanted to die And you told me, I remember you telling me, you go, wow, I said it, you know, I, maybe we were watching nothing but trouble. And I, it was like 
it was a little late for me. It was probably like seven years old. And I was like, whoa, that's weird. They seem like such a happy person. Like, I wouldn't think that they want to die. And you were like, they don't really die, idiot. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what, I cannot, I cannot accept the fact that you were seven years old and you thought that people committed suicide by I film. I did. I'm maybe <laughs> like, six years old. There's no real. It had to be earlier. Yeah, it had to be earlier. Maybe not. Like, that seven, was, what was maybe it? not. Nothing it was 90. Control. That was. Yeah. OK, that was a little late, but I believe I, it, it. it. I don't think it was nothing but trouble. But but yeah, well, I had to have that same same uh, conversation with Ty, our younger brother about. And I think there is it's like but I was but yeah, nobody had had that conversation with you. I had to have that conversation with you like this is not this isn't real. Mm -hmm. like a real thing like this is like yeah you know so that was yeah wow no i don't remember that but uh you're welcome yeah. um well anyhow that is like <laughs> okay one of the things that was like ingrained into my head was that bone crusher like oh my god is that real and then the other thing that was just like i've never forgotten about i mean actually everything in the movie i've never forgotten about it i make so many people watch that movie because and I can barely even tell you the plot of it because it's so psycho. But I make so many people watch it because it's so psycho. so psycho. And there are these two adult babies in it that like are running around a junkyard. And Dan Aykroyd is one of these babies like with like a huge stomach in a diaper. Um, a giant yeah, he's baby. He's got like a prosthetic a giant baby. suit they're on. They're big. Yeah, they look like they're they look like. Keepy yes. babies, I guess, like it would be the yeah. term where it's like the, it's the sort of like cone head with like a little tuft of hair coming out. They're all bald. They're gigantic. Right. So they're terrifying. Yes. And they're talking like um, babies. And they talk. They then. The, yeah. They talk like babies. Do you want to go do this? <laughs> yeah. OK, let's go. I mean, like and I that's not that, that it's yeah. even worse than that. That's that's not even that's not an exaggeration. That's an underselling of like how much they are talking like if I win again, I get another bowl of cereal. So if you like if you got the visual in your head of what that looks like, then also just remember the fact that Dan Aykroyd. Um, well, first of all, just look that up. Like, I mean, you, the way we describe it, you just oh, look it up. Look, Bobo, Little Devil. See this movie. From Nothing But Trouble. <laughs> but then you have to remember the fact that Dan Aykroyd directed it. So there was a lot of time spent where he's directing, like, the other actors <laughs> and himself and, like, telling, like, the DP camera stuff in that baby outfit. And that, like, is an, of course, I didn't know that when I was little, but I think about that all the time now. <laughs> like, how... Could anybody listen to him when oh, he man. was acting? And it and and if you've seen any, here's the thing about Dan Aykroyd. If you have seen any like actual, I would say that Dan Aykroyd is an immensely talented comedian and an incredibly serious human being. Like if you've seen any sort of like interview with him. It wouldn't be like he was like, yeah, I'm in a baby costume. OK, could you kind of do this? He would be intensely explaining exactly what he wanted. <laughs> so to see this like big, gigantic baby like talking, you know, to the DP. I, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that had to happen. It had to happen. And but not, OK, but not just that. Right. Let's move on to the judge. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> I firmly believe in my heart of hearts <laughs> that the reason that Dan Aykroyd wrote and directed this movie <laughs> is so that he could have as a hilarious joke, a dick <laughs> for a nose. His nose in this movie is a penis. It, it isn't, it doesn't look like a penis. It, is literally a penis with a urethral <laughs> at the end of it. There is no denying that this, this is what it is. And it's detachable. So later on in the movie, spoiler alert, you find out that this man actually doesn't have a nose. 
um, which is frightening. Yeah, like the, that is the deep that, socket just that. of no nos. Yeah, the no nose socket, right? Which if you've ever seen that is just terrifying, right? So that was terrifying. But the prosthetic, you have to think, okay, they're killing people, right? They're they might even be making might making food out of them. This is probably somebody's penis that he like, you know, cult, he he farmed from his I don't even know what's worse. Like I'm putting myself in the like mindset of like some single woman who's like went home with the judge one night and like, and maybe she was drunk. So she had on like beer goggles and then she wakes up. Okay. And she sees that this man that she just had a one night stand with has a dick nose. Okay. Well, okay. Maybe actually right before she went to bed, she like, is like, oh my God, he's got a dick for a nose. So then when they wake up the next morning, he doesn't have the nose and he just has the socket. I don't know if I'd be like, kind of like, oh, I pray and he don't put the nose back on. Like, I, I don't know what's worse. Just the sock open socket nose or an actual penis nose. And here's what's psycho too, because again, I saw this movie for the first time when I was little and before I even knew what a penis looked like. So for years, not even until I was an adult, did I realize that was a penis nose. And I also don't know if like, and I don't think they were censoring it on TV. Like I really don't. No, of course, they, they can't. They can't. I, I think it was something that it just slipped by because people were, I don't think it yeah. connected. I really don't. I don't, I don't think that they looked at it. And I, I think the people who are a little bit more, I don't know, cruder was like that's yeah. a dick right but i think people are just like oh well that's just a nose yeah, well it's an oddly shaped nose you know and but no i mean like that is there i don't know it definitely doesn't get sense no it, it didn't get I, but the thing that i thought where it was actually too penis like when i was little and saw the movie was there's that dinner scene and they are eating like the kielbasas or bratwurst and they're oh, really my- gray and I remember being like, yeah. ooh, I think that looks like penis or something. <laughs> that was like what really freaks me out. And then now I watch it now and I'm like, no, nope, there's an actual, they show an actual dick in the movie. It's just not attached to someone's like genital. It's uh, on their face. It was, it was, it was the first, first movie we saw that had full frontal nudity. It just didn't happen to be yeah. in the right place. Um, but to this day, I mean, I love, wa- I love watching it. I love what like, I mean, maybe it's like, like I watch it with Zeb and he's always like, please, like, do we have to I, stop watch, making me watch this movie? I hate it. It's terrible. But I love how immersive that, that house and that whole world is. Like once you get to the small right. town, the house, the junkyard, also like um, a Dan Aykroyd, the judge's room in the movie, everything's like levers and pulleys. And um, what is what is the Rube Gold machine? What are those? Yeah, yeah, Rube, yeah. Rube, Rube Goldberg. Everything's Goldberg that. machine. I really think that, I really think that what he was doing was literally just the house is a representation of Dan Aykroyd's mind, right? Like all the different machinations that are in there, you know, and like how many, all the conspiracy theories and all just like the the weird dead ends yeah. and the tunnels and the and slides and that. like that's what's going on inside Dan Aykroyd's head. Yeah, and he just spilled yes. it out. And you know what? It and you know what's crazy. He spilled it out and he just was like, drop the mic. That's it. I'm out. Not direct. That's it. He directed one movie. That's I it. think that's. And he was just like, I did it. Awesome. I did it. I <laughs> like, love that. I, I got because it out. You know what? Right? He got everything out in that movie. He got adult um, baby men. Yes. He got out a penis nose. He got out a house of horrors. Uh, better than actually any I've ever seen because like whoever set deck to that movie is incredible. Plus there was a whole freaking junkyard. Plus there was the dinner. Oh, the, all the food came around on like a train track. And so the food would like move around and it was like all these nasty, like sauerkrauts and condiments and like mayonnaise and stuff. And it was like, you had to like grab your um, Mm -hmm. food from the train car before it went by. It was so Mm -hmm. cool. I love that movie. Plus, he also got in a Looney Tunes ending. Which, when you consider what came before it, like the Bone Crusher, right? 
the bone crusher was obviously a cartoonish like thing, right? Because if that was a re- real thing, it would just be like blood and gore, but it just spits out bones, yep. right? So we had those ind- indications, but I don't know. It would just it wasn't cartoonish enough because it happened, and you're like, okay, I guess they just it just stripped their bones clean and just like, you know, did this thing. Right. But the very last frame of the movie is when Chevy chase escapes, he gets back to the city and he comes somehow it's months later. I think, I don't think it's like right at the same time, although I could be wrong. Um, and it's later and he, I guess gets in a situation where he is, they have it set up so that he's going to get married to the, mm-hmm. the, the daughter, John Candy, right? The mute John Candy, John Candy playing a woman. And he basically is like, nope. And then he crashes through a wall and the <laughs> and like they show the wall and it's like this like, you know, shape of a person. Yep. Like like those television shows, you know, where like that thing's coming at people and they have to like make a shape, you know, so that like they, it doesn't, you know, the, the thing doesn't push them into the water. It's literally a cartoon cutout a la Looney Tunes, a la Bugs Bunny. And it was even at the time I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, that's crazy. But I think that that was Dan Aykroyd's like, and you know how I'm going to fucking end it? Looney yeah. Tunes cutout. And, and people are like, Dan, okay, okay, hold on, Dan. Oh, I get it. He's like, no, fuck you. Looney Tunes cut out. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it, and you're going to see me do it, and then I'm going to drop the mic, and I'm never going to yeah. do another movie. It's like, okay, Dan, okay, but, but let, me just, let me just talk to you. I was like, no, I'm going to do it. And he did it. <laughs> I think this it. is like the OG <laughs> director's cut of so, like, and also if, cause I can't <laughs> even believe that there's actually right. more that could have been directed to this. If there's a director's cut, give it to me. Let me have it. Um, also I'm just remembering because we're talking about the ending that, um, I think Chevy Chase is a banker in the movie because before Chevy Chase jumps through okay. the wall, he sees this like footage of Dan Aykroyd, like on a news report, the judge. And he like says something. And then he turns right to the camera and goes, see you soon banker. Um, So I think he was a banker. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. It was, yeah, it was, it was almost like it was like, you could explain it away. Like the last part was almost like a nightmare, Mm -hmm. like a dream, you know? Yeah, I agree. I, I, yeah, that does ring a bell. So yeah, he might have been a banker. I thought he was a lawyer, but yeah, um, but that that does that does sound familiar. Yeah. So I'm sure there's something coming up right now on that in post production they put up his he was actually a this. So thank you for that um, to our production and team. Um, now comes oh, hey. the part of the show where Cubby <laughs> jumps on um, my back. And this would Cubby is Heidi's cat. <laughs> and I guess she's going to join us um, for our second where we were when it seems like it's Cubby's pick. That's right. Uh, it's a it's a it's a se- seamless, uh, seamless segue. Thank um, you, Cubby. Um, the second the second where we were when is a movie <laughs> that I convinced you to see instead of another movie. Um, and I mentioned it earlier in 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 the in the cast but um do you want to set this yeah, one up yeah i i would i would love to set this one up um because nothing but trouble changed my life because it really did show me that like anything could be in a movie and um like i said total immersion transportive um that's what nothing but trouble was for me and still today the next where we were when changed my life because it was the first time where I realized how unfair life could really be. And mind you, my parents had gotten divorced and <laughs> that didn't even seem that unfair. This was burned, has been burned into my brain for so many years that even when I brought it up to Justin last week, like he brushed it off. Like, I don't know what you're talking about, but this is such a deep cut for me. So 
when our parents got divorced, um, the first like kind of six months, we would go week to week at our parents. If we were at our mom's for the week on Friday nights, she would always take us to the movies. Now, on that Friday night, one week I got to pick what movie we saw and one week Justin got to pick what movie we saw. But mind you, this was only twice a month because the other two weeks we were at our dad. So it's like it still felt really, 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 really rare. So February 17th comes around. That's our mom's birthday, 1989. Now, first of all, I thought because it was our mom's birthday, she would actually pick the movie that Friday night. OK, because she had to like like um, choke down a lot of bullshit movies uh, <laughs> that we've already talked about that Justin and I wanted to see. <laughs> So I was she would le- she would leave yes. m- movies. She would leave go movies and just something. go hang out outside. Um, yeah. 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 So she, but she still said, no, you guys can still pick. It's OK. Like, this is the thing I was saying, like, we'll actually be sweet about our mom. I think this is very sweet. She let us pick the movie on her birthday. Um, but it's Justin's week. Well, on February 17th, 1989, two movies were coming out. One of them was the burbs. And one of them, I roll for those of you who aren't watching. Um, the other one was Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Now, I had been seeing the previews for both on TV. And I was over the moon excited about Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I mean, just like. Uh, I, 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 yeah. As was I. I was okay, excited. Well, you too. weren't. I was you not weren't as vocalizing it that Obviously. much. Also, you weren't really vocalizing that much about the burbs. OK, I go to you this is, on that true. Friday. I remember we were in mom's apartment on Harrison and we were like. This is weird. We were either in mom's apartment on Harrison or we were at Brian's apartment. I like can kind of see them both in my head, Ooh. but we were. OK, we were right. like. Um, if we were in the Harrison apartment, we were in the living room, but like on the right side, like, can we, can we, can can we talk about, can we talk, can we talk about Brian just for a second? So this would be first um, boyfriend, uh, Brian, uh, the relationship with dad, right? First boyfriend. Ooh, good question. I don't know, but no, (laughs) Brian. No, Neil, no, Neil Moldenhauer, who was Justin Neil. and I's like Neil Moldenhauer. <laughs> oh, would have been. It would have been a. It would have been a, a sweet life. life. <laughs> Neil, oh it my! It would have been a sweet life. This guy, this guy was, this guy was a. Uh, he was a uh, uh, arbiter. So he was actually somebody who settled. Uh, disagreements between parties like that was literally his job he was an he looked exactly right? like um lived in st Ferris louis Bueller's dad tall Ta- yeah, beautiful gray hair it was, it was uncanny silver fox great great guy neil neil molden he took us like, he lived in st we, louis we, we we still we still yeah, miss we you we still miss you um <laughs> this is uh he took because that's where we were when and i can do this neil molden we went to visit so we we're from kansas city we drove four hours to St. Louis where he lived for the weekend. He had us down with our mom. He took us to a St. Louis. No, he took us to the arch, but um, we could see the Cardinals game from the arch. Justin could even from the top of the arch, Justin right. even read the scoreboard. Like, so that was really cool. Then the next night he took us to go see Indiana Jones and the last crusade at union station and got us like fudge at one of those, like, fudge places right in the middle of the mall where they like um like flip the fudge right in front of you and then um i actually i might be the reason <laughs> that they broke up because then the next day um oh. that sunday i so that was friday then saturday night we're seeing the movie fudge then sunday i walked in on them having oh and that might have been like him being Evan, like, doing, I don't want the- kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that that's a little bit of well, a jump. Well, we never went but, back um, to St. Louis. Well, how about that? 
We did. No, we did not. I well, did I go back to St. Louis for a basketball thing? Okay. I believe that I did. I believe that I did with I did. Neil but Moldenhauer. Event, Neil Moldenhauer you didn't go was back with Neil Moldenhauer. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I'm almost positive. Almost positive. Um, but in any, yeah, because I was by, I was by myself. I was hanging out with Lucky. him by myself. But um, so okay. Neil Moldenhauer, <laughs> Brian, Brian was a, uh, he was a uh, uh, barber yeah. with, <laughs> with yeah. a mullet. He worked right next to like Ken right. Lynn so, on, um, and like Muddy's Coffee House. Yeah. Yeah. Near UMKC. Yeah, near UMKC, there used to be a barbershop right there, um, uh, which UMKC is University of Missouri, Kansas City, for people who do not know. Um, and it was like right on the campus, right? So Brian was a good guy, but he couldn't hold a candle to Neil Moldenhauer. So in any event, I'm almost positive yeah. we were at Mom's. I'm almost positive. Yeah, I'm almost positive. So we weren't at Brian's um, because we didn't, I, we didn't really, Brian's place um, wasn't that nice. So I don't think we really... <laughs> Did you hang no, out with a lot of Brian's? Not I a didn't. whole lot, but I will say, because this is a callback to like maybe our first episode when I told you that I, that one time at the, um, this girl, Caroline Hyatt's, um, birthday party, I stepped on the blue tarp and I fell directly into a hot tub at Brian's one time he picked me up from school and then I had to hang out there and then he was taking me back over to mom's. And I went downstairs like early or something. He went back up to like grab something and I stepped on another tarp. But this time, this time it was for like a full pool that was full of snow or something. I don't it was the winter. So there was like snow in it. I don't know that like I think snow had fallen in the pool and then they tarped it. And so he came downstairs mm -hmm. and I was like sliding like quicksand into like a pool. Of snow. Oh, my god! And gosh. then he had to, like, kind of rescue oh my gosh. me. Wow. And I also think that was... I know, well, I think that you, was Brian. our little secret. I don't think he was like, please don't tell your mom. Um, or she won't. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, um, that was a roundabout way. Who knows if that's going to no, get cut out it, or not. It. But, uh, so we will, um, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. Okay, good. Um, so we were either at Brian's or at mom's and, uh, it was my was your week week to pick and, and I just, and I wouldn't give it up, but see, I wouldn't this give is it what up. Pisses me off about, and I love you so much, but I know you at that time. And even though you were a great brother, <laughs> here's the deal. I should have never told you that I wanted to see Bill and Ted's excellent adventure that bad because I know for a fact that you wanted to see it more than Ooh. the burbs, but you knew that I wanted to see it and I wanted to trade with you. So you said, no, we're going to the burbs. I know that you did that. I know that you did that. And that's why it's like mm. sat with me for so long. You did it to spite mm. me. And I even mm. went to mom and I was like, this is not fair because he wants, he wants to see Bill and Ted more than the burbs. I know he does. Ooh. And she was like, it's his, it's his week, honey. Oh man. She was, she was, uh, she was tough, but no. fair. Um, I don't remember I that. <laughs> it certainly doesn't mm -hmm. not sound like yeah. me. <laughs> but I, but I don't, I don't really now I will say, you know, in my defense, I don't think that I was a spiteful no, child. I think I was trying I here. Okay. So let, so. You know what? Let me let me let me defend myself. Uh, post post situation. Okay. What if? What if? What if? I knew we were going to go see Bill and Ted's. Mm -hmm. You weren't going to pick the burbs, uh -huh. right? So what if? In my mind, because I don't remember spiting you, right? I really, really don't. What if I was like, well. She's not going to want to go see that. Her next pick is Bill and Ted's. So let's go see the burbs now because I'm not going to get a chance to see it if I don't see it now. And she's going to see something that maybe is a little bit outside of like, you know, the thing that maybe it's a little scary. You know, maybe it's a little bit more, you know, it's like it's actually if you think about it, I mean, the burbs have some pretty, pretty. uh 
this was before Mm -hmm. nothing but trouble. And this had cannibalism and Satanism. And this was a dark comedy. And I think probably this was like the first dark comedy that you ever saw. I probably saw some dark comedies before it, but I will say, yes, it was too dark for me. But also what was dark was that my brother had betrayed me. And so I know for I remember (laughs) watching and I think we were at Crown Center when we saw the Burbs. And then two weeks later, we were at Brywood when we saw Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. We hundred percent were we saw crown we we saw it at Crown Center. Yes. Yep. Um, but the entire burbs I was pouting. I it was like just like no. And so I'm sorry. I was like, well, that's very sweet, but you don't have to feel bad. But I was pouting and I absorbed nothing. The only thing I absorbed is until about three years ago when I watched the burbs again for the first time since. The thing that I absorbed was a hatred for the burbs so deep that even th- throughout my entire life, any time would bring anyone would bring up the burbs, I go, I hate that movie. I hate that movie with like no real context. Like, why do you hate it so much? I mean, I know it's weird. You know, I just hate it. I hate it. Even as an adult, like immaturely being like that movie fucking sucks. I hate the burbs. And finally, <laughs> like Zeb was like hey, I get it that you don't like the movie, but there's like something in your tone that sounds like trauma about the verbs. Like, what is it like? And also, if you could just articulate like what you hate about it, like, you know, like, because it's not just that when you're just like, oh, my God, that movie is like so stupid, like a Pauly Shore movie or something like it's stupid. Um, But he was like, you like hate it. And I was and then I was suddenly like, Oh yeah, well, I don't even know <laughs> what happens in it. I don't know what it's about. Like he was like, "Well, you should watch it. It's like really good and it's funny and it's weird." And it was like hard for me to get into it, but then when I watched it, I was like, "This is really good. <laughs> I like it a lot." I think I think it's peak Hanks. Yeah. Um. Oh, for I sure. I think it's Hanks at his at his top. It also was just such a crazy career move because this came out right after Big. Mm-hmm. This was the year after Big. And I know that that's why I wanted to see it so badly, right? Because Big was just, I mean, it was big. Yeah. It was the movie that year. And and it just catapulted him into superstardom, right? So he was like the comedic guy during that that window of like the late 80s. Also, everyone, um, just because we brought yeah. up Big, um, and obviously if you saw that movie when you are younger, everybody's dream room still to, for me today the, is the dream loft or is the big loft. And there is an apartment building that I have seen a child jumping in the window on a trampoline. Like he's got the big trampoline, like his parents. No, you have to explain. You have to explain where this thing is in Brooklyn because it is, you've shown it to me and it is nuts. It's it looks like, like, it's like clock a movie tower set. building. It's this building where at the top of it, there's, it's like a right. incredible lofts, like 14 floors of incredible lofts. But then the top like steeple is like a four story, like clock tower with a big old still working clock on it. And there's like four different levels. And on one of the levels, I've seen a That's kid insane. jumping on a trampoline, like, um, Elizabeth Perkins and Tom Hanks in big, like that was the ultimate dream. And I like see it happen. And this kid is young, but his parents saw big and we're like, we're doing that. We have the money and the space to do that. And the ceilings that high that our kid can have a trampoline and jump like that. Amazing. And then a Amazing. year later, this, the burbs it, came it, out. That's. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I know. I'm I'm sorry. I, I I do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry it traumatized you so much. No, I just think it's that you did that you didn't get your way that one time, <laughs> and you and you carried it with you like a sack of hot rocks on your back. But it's weird <laughs> how long we can store things in the body. I'm now I'm gonna get all like, um, therapy or something. Like, but I, I held on. You can to just that let it go. So long. Just let it go. Right. It's uh, this, it is. This is therapy. This yeah. Is therapy. And I got my way two so, weeks later, but whatever. I know that's some spite. Mm-hmm. That is some spite right there. That's that's impressive. Um, but the burbs, I mean, this was you know, this was not just uh, 
Tom Hanks at his peak. You had Carrie Fisher. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you had director Joe Dante. Yeah. Who directed Gremlins, right? So it was just one of those. Now, I didn't like it that much like when I saw it because it just, it did, it wasn't what I, I did, really don't feel like the trailer was a great representation of it. Mm-hmm. It was much darker. Mm-hmm. Um, it had more mystery and not as much hijinks. There was a lot more hijinks in the trailer than what I remember in the movie. Yeah. So it was definitely a disappointment uh, for me at the time. And I there, don't think I've watched it since. I don't think I've seen it since. There's nothing um, more crushing in the world, especially when you're a kid, when a movie doesn't live up to the trailer. It Well, especially that, because that was the next one after Big, too. And it and it got I think it got like two stars in the star, too. So that was one of those things was like, oh, yeah, it uh, wasn't. Bob Butler was right. <laughs> like, this isn't this isn't great. After like big probably got three stars, probably got three stars, probably didn't get three and a half because he didn't give give that to like most mainstream movies. But two yeah, other movie not... trailers that are burned in my mind from growing up that were the best um, previews I ever saw were Mad Love. And then the movie sucked um, so bad. Justin, you took me. <laughs> okay, and- right. Did I? I made up for the burbs with Mad yeah, Love. Yeah, you did take me to Mad because Love. I that was not a movie that I wanted. No, to go you see. definitely Although, didn't. Uh, who was the who was the girl in that? Drew Barrymore. Right, and well, it was like I peak mean, Drew Barrymore, you know. and like, but the peak Drew Barrymore. And there was also dealt with dealt with mental illness, yeah. dealt with mental illness at the time, which was this not a very scene popular where he's topic. driving and she's covering um, his eyes. And it's like all this like trust game and stuff. And it's like so intense, especially in the preview. And then there's also a scene in the preview where like she's cut out all these pictures of like eyes, like on her walls, like real eyes, eyeballs all watching her, I think, to show like how crazy she is. Um, And I and it's like shocking in the preview. And then I don't think it's in the movie, which is another thing that I hate when the really good scene from the the trailer isn't in the movie. And then the other movie that I think was like one of the best previews I ever saw in my life. And I did not like the movie or I'll go as far as saying I think the movie sucked was blow. The preview fucking oh. ruled. It had that stereo MC song connected. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like walking through the airport. It was so good. And the movie didn't live up to it. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp, right? Yeah. Penelope plays the drug Cruz. Dealer. Yeah. Great. Penelope Cruz. Great preview. V- he voiceover throughout. Yeah. Yeah. I think I remember that. Yeah. I think I remember that. I don't, I don't, I don't remember that movie sucking, but I, I remember that preview. So, so yeah, the burbs, um, not really going to get into the story because it's not, I don't think it's all that interesting, but really no. just, it was a spicy movie back in a late eighties, uh, uh, early movie going reality for us. Um, and again, I think that was the first dark comedy that you saw. I really do. Yeah, like think- the first like legit dark comedy, not something that's was like kind of like a little bit of a horror, but like movie. But I, I, Really do think that that was like the first like legit dark comedy. It wasn't super broad. Um, it was spicy like hot tamales. Our candy bringing everything full circle. Hot tamales, spicy episode. Spicy. We got into it this episode like quite a bit from Justin giving Uh, out my address to someone I haven't seen in 30 years to um, to uh, him betraying me on a Friday night movie pick, and also, um, us not ending up. Also, our mom driving away from a cop. Um, uh, Justin and I almost going to GV. Well, yeah, and the fact that we did not end up the stepchildren of <laughs> Neil Moldenhauer, and how it's all obvious that that's still stuck in our bodies too. That we knew that would have been. Like it for us. Like ne- we probably would have lived in a ne- Neil mansion. Neil <laughs> But Neil Moldenhauer. Yeah. We, if you're out there, Neil Moldenhauer, get in touch. Yeah, we love you. Let's have lunch. We'll still. Yeah. Um, but you know what? We're doing okay. 
Um, and we're still into things. We still love things and we love current things. So Justin, um, I want to want to hit you with our segment. That's so Raven, where we talk about the things we're currently into. And uh, I want to know what's your that's so Raven for this week. Well, uh, my that's so Raven, I anticipate is going to be 100 percent cocoa. Oh, um, because I'm I'm going I'm going home. Thank you for sending this to me. I'm going home <laughs> right now. And, and I'm going to I'm going to watch this. Um, because anonymously she runs a fashion vlog as the style tiger, which becomes a big hit after a trip to Paris. Will she become a style icon after all? Will she finally draw the attention of Bruno, a cute boy at school hmm. slowly, but surely Coco learns that she has to be a hundred percent herself. So, uh, this is not what I'm obsessed with. I anticipate I will be obsessed with hundred mm-hmm. percent Coco. I get that. Um, I am going to, um, I'm going to go, I'm get, a little bit of a callback, a little bit of a callback. Um, so I'm obsessed <laughs> and this is a little, it's a little strange. Uh, I'm obsessed with myself. Um, so I actually just dropped my first NFT today. Whoa. Like you made an NFT. I did. I made an NFT. Awesome. Um, I was in, I was in, I told you about the sort of like the NFT stuff that's yeah. going on. Um, I am in a community, uh, which is uh, not the, like the main NFT community, but it's, it's a different project. So it's, it's a different crypto project called Cardano. And there's a really, really great community there. And I just actually took part in the first debate uh, that the community has ever had. It was televised live um, on YouTube. And uh, on this uh, show called NFT Update. So if you want to check that out, uh, we'll have the link in the show notes. And uh, I was debating uh, one of my fellow community members about a technology called Discord. And as, as a way to raise money for this show, what they do is they bring people on and mostly it's projects, right? And they'll have a card, a digital card that they sell. Um, so we created a card um, and I and you'll see it now. I'm sure that they're going to be putting it in the in the the um, the graphics. And so you're going to see that card now. But then we did a variant card, which is sort of like the special card. It's only like 10 percent of the cards. Right. And I decided that I wanted to do a takeoff of Beeple. And Beeple has this like very famous, <laughs> really bad looking photo of him just like. With his tongue out. So we had that variant. And then I asked them, I was like, what if I did a special piece of art that was an airdrop later on? So anybody who bought any of these cards gets a special piece of art. And it, they'd never done it before. And uh, here it is. Um, it's uh, some emoji art. Uh, I've got this. I've always kind of sign off my tweets with like the peace symbol, the love and like art. And so this is called Peace Love Art. Um, it is my first NFT. So I'm just kind of. I kind of wanted to brag a little bit because I've got that. And then I'm going to be releasing my short film as an NFT Whoa. Um, awesome. in, the fall, in the fall. Yeah. So I've decided that that's how that's going to go. So, yeah. So I'm just, um, I'm a little, that's, I've, I've been spending a lot of time and energy getting ready for that. So I wanted to, to do a little of a humble brag. There. That's so Raven. How about you? What are, what is that so Raven for you? this week oh my gosh so I just found this last night but I'm like so obsessed with it I was like gonna talk about a couple other things but I was like no I've I've known about this for less than 24 hours and I'm in love with it so I was on YouTube and I was looking for like this old Chippendales um two-hour movie that like came out in like the 80s where it's like all these women whatever it's like a scripted Chippendales movie Um, I was looking for that because I was like, was that real? And I um, wanted to know about it. But during it, I found this segment from a show called Real People. Do you remember that show? It was on from like um, 79 to 84. Oh, man. Uh, No. 
So, I don't. So the show Real People did a segment about a Chippendales dancer, but what Real People was, was like kind of a parody of 2020. So it was all these, like, it's Fred Willard mm. was like a journalist on it. Um, okay. Byron Allen was this... one. And it was human what? interest stories, but about like, just like, um, kind of f- n- not even just funny people, just like interesting human beings that have interesting jobs or interesting. Okay. Yeah. And there's a whole YouTube um, channel, real people where it's just like five or six minute videos of all sorts of different real people. And it was like, there was like a stripper for Jesus, like Fred Willard's interviewing her. And so that one's like a little bit more like, is this one kind of scripted? But the woman who was stripping for Jesus, like was a legit stripper for Jesus, like, um, you know, strips for money for Christ and the church and everything. Um, and has her reasons. And it was like awesome. Mary, Mary Magdalene. Yeah. Mary Magdalene, <laughs> watching yeah. her profile. Um, there was also this segment about something called the Rambling River Race, which if you've never heard of this, which I had never heard of, it was something that went on in Atlanta, Georgia from like 1975 to 1980, where one of the lakes there was so polluted that they thought of this idea <laughs> that was like, what if we got all these people to do a race down the river for one day in the summer, like on tubes, on rafts, where they're they're collecting like lake litter for us and it became this thing where like i mean it looked like the ozarks except like on steroids where like hundreds of thousands of people would go participate this one day a year make these gigantic like rafts some were super tiny some were gigantic some were like hundreds of tires just tied together and all these people were floating down the river together picking up trash but then so the whole idea was to um unpollute the waters but then it's like they're putting like 300,000 people in the water and I'm probably <laughs> overestimating but then they were just like littering it up even more like they were picking up trash I was going to say but this went and on it was coming out the back this went on for like 6 years and it was just like this huge it was just a mecca of like lake trash and lake people in the water but they profile it on this show real people so mine's kind of a two-parter because it's definitely real people and then it's just the that something called the rambling river race ever existed which was just normal human beings like floating around on boats um picking up trash out of the water but inadvertently polluting it at the same time like it's just so awesome so that's my that's so raven it's so crazy i do you know that Byron Allen owns the Weather Channel? I'm, I mean, I, I, that doesn't even shock me. I mean, the guy's been around. Do you know, do you know, do you, he's been around so long, but you know how he did it? Uh-uh. So he, I, w- you said he started in, in, in real people. Okay. I don't so know if he even started. It there. might, uh, probably, I'm guessing from his age, he's, yeah. that's where he started. He then, took that because remember he always had those like interview shows right yeah yeah and the interviews weren't very good you know like they they were very light interviews Mm -hmm. these were not uh you know in-depth hard-hitting interviews but that was his thing he basically would go to these publicists and he said i'm doing an interview show i'm gonna just promote the fuck out of like this person's project no hard questions and remember, he was always on. It was on after his interview SNL. shows were his, but his interview shows were always yeah. on. Like, remember, at a certain point, it was just Byron Allen's show. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if it was real people, but then it was like yeah, stars. No, I know right? he had his own show for sure. And that was his thing. That was his thing. Like Byron Allen was just he was always interviewing everybody, right? Mm-hmm. And that was the deal. It was just because he just was the softball guy, right? He would just throw the softballs at these at these stars. They'd hit him out of the park, and he just made an insane amount of money from syndication enough money. He's probably, I don't know if he's a billionaire now, but enough money to buy the fucking weather channel. (laughs) And so hats off Byron because the strategy worked. Like I, I, when I saw him back in the day, I was like, who is this guy? And then he's like, you know, he became like a media tycoon. So uh, he knows, he knows a lot, a lot better than I get it. That's uh, good for Byron. That's right. 
Good for Byron. Good for Byron. But we're winding down this show. And I did have I did have an idea though. Okay. Uh, for the last segment. Shoot. Um so what if we do a little trivia? Ooh, I like trivia. We're we're at our tenth show. Okay. Um and Happy Tenth. I figured that Happy Tenth, yes. And I figure that we can maybe run through uh five questions about the last nine episodes. Okay, I love this. Um, you know, and uh here's here's the deal. Um if you get them all right, I don't pitch you a sketch. <laughs> so pitching a sketch is still on the table. Well, I mean, it, I don't think it was ever really. I mean, like, let's be honest with you. I don't think it's it never really off, the off the table. table. For you. Um, it's never off the table. OK, I feel I mean, granted, you've put together these trivia questions, but I feel confident that I can get all five trivia questions. Right. It's a. It's about it's about our collective okay. experience. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Um, okay. I'll take that bet. So, a question number one: Where did we see Back to the Future Part Three? Brywood Theaters. That's correct. Question number two. Who directed Return to Oz? Ooh. <laughs> I know it was a one-time director. It was the only thing he ever did. It was directed. a one-time director. And I know he was like a DP cinematographer. He did something before. No. You're close. And he even You're he's close. like won Oscars and stuff. He has. I don't know his name. Oh, <laughs> his name is Walter Murch. <laughs> that one was too hard. Okay, pitch the sketch. Okay, um, so I think that you would make a hilarious elf. So, um, what if you were in Santa's workshop, uh-huh. right? So this is probably like a holiday sketch idea, right? right? Something for like so you're, the you're in last San- show before the Christmas break. Exactly. Mm-hmm. This is the holiday show. So you're in Santa's workshop and um, you... I'm just stepping away from uh, Okay. So you, can keep going you want me to? Here. Are you sure? Uh, can you hear me now? Do you want to do the trivia instead? We have a guest tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very special guest. A very special guest, you guys, because, I mean, I would say that he's basically part of the show. I mean, you hear Justin and I every week, and you hear this guy. Um, He wrote and performed our theme song. Please welcome Matt Saladino. Thank you, guys. Hey, Matt. Hey. 